I'm going to take you into the world of plants and catalysis today. But when starting out, I want to um, know what you would be if you could transform yourself for a day. Just give it a second, think about it. An actress, an artist, a politician, whatever, if you aren't already one. So my choice would be very strange. I would turn into a plant. So why is that? Isn't that some sort of degradation? I might say if I were a plant, ironically, I could finally take care of myself fully for a day. Because we are very much depending on plants. Humankind is tied to plants. With the oxygen that we breathe, the food we eat, and many other useful things that give us a lot of pleasure. And the art of the plants is the photosynthesis. Plants get all this from nothing but love and air. Basically, something more. It's just sunlight, water, and CO2. And it's still one of the biggest mysteries and secrets of nature, how plants can give us all this from barely nothing. And this is what chemistry still needs to crack. There's a race on, and we need to do the artificial photosynthesis. It's been going on for more than 100 years, and chemists all over the world are joining to make us finally independent from the plants, to cut the tie between men and plants. So, well, um, there's also, besides that fundamental interest, something very useful to it. Humanity is growing, and this is a good thing. But in parallel, we also need to think about how to cleanly cover our demanding power requests. Uh, regardless of the correctness of those numbers, actually it's clear that the sun will never leave us. Every year, the sun gives us 85,000 terawatts. That's unbelievable. And a, even a conservative estimation shows that in 2050, if we harvest just less than 1% of this, we all could bask in energy. We would have more than enough. But it's not only photovoltaics. There are also different ways to store the light and energy. And this is something the plants can do to perfection and that we just can't do like this. So this is why I want to become a plant, to creep inside it and want to be able to do this for a day. I'm going to show you what we do in this game and how the plants do it. Okay, the basic reaction looks shockingly simple. I mean, it's, it's, uh, what the plants do is to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen, and uh, they store, um, or we want to store, hydrogen, sunlight and hydrogen is a very primary fuel, as we saw before. So this is great, but the chemistry itself is very, very nitty-gritty. I mean, if you had a catalyst that would split water, and you would put it on your skin in the sunlight, this would be scary, wouldn't it? You would basically explode. You could be assured we are not there yet in chemistry. We want to be, but for the moment we have a lot of homework to do. Once this is done, actually, we are in a very favorable position to store um, the sunlight into hydrogen. But the bottleneck, why this is not yet fully on the market, is actually the oxygen making in the chemical world. This is like yin and yang. Everything has a bright side and also a dark side. And making the oxygen is really the thing we have to deal with in modern catalysis. This is the dark part we have to dive into and resolve, and where we try to learn from the plants. If we have the hydrogen economy, there are very, very different ways to go. We can do fuel cells right up. We can convert the hydrogen into liquid fuels just using the nasty CO2 from the atmosphere and using very well-known reliable catalysis. So then the consumer wouldn't even notice something happened. We could carry on with the liquid fuels, which we still need for many powerful applications. So this is that what keeps me going every morning in the lab and doing that research for the water splitting. Some of you might now say, mm, don't we have already a very good way to store the solar energy or to manage it with photovoltaics? Well, photovoltaics is something temporary. It's sunlight into current, right up, and no storage directly. 
So and then, after this talk, of course, I want you to discuss with me, to ask the questions. Science is always asked in lazy questions. This is where science begins. Everybody is a scientist. So ask, before you put this photovoltaics on your rooftops, ask yourself, where does this actually come from? Give it a second because it's really classic and nasty chemistry. It's high energy. You have a lot of stuff going on. And um, the raw silicon that you get from the rocks, there's no raw silicon in nature. The raw silicon is not yet enough. You need a lot of heat and energy to get it. And then you have to melt it twice over to get it pure. And all this energy has to be gained back from the solar light. And this is the thing that the plants can easily overcome. There's another way to get the hydrogen from photovoltaics, and this is actually by electrolysis. You can take extra current, electrolyze. But you can see at a glance that this is still very big tech. It's a lot of technology involved and big apparatuses. Now, something else for you. Wouldn't it be very nice to just do it with a simple uh, bag of water? Just to have a catalyst and put it into the water bags and have the hydrogen spilling out right away? Now, some of you might say this is just alchemy, this is a pipe dream, but it's in fact not. It is so that techno-economic analysis have really shown that you can put the catalysts into the bags, oxygen and hydrogen making, and then you can actually harvest your hydrogen at a marketable price. You can sell it, maintenance, staff costs and everything else included. So this is actually a, a very wonderful vision that we can have today. Mm. And these days, we are, are working in our lab on the catalysts to do the oxygen making. This is the bottleneck of the process. And if you are through this, you are actually in the open to split the water with sunlight. You can go do two different ways. You can make it with nanoparticles, or you can also do it with molecules. And the molecules are actually leading us back to nature. And in nature, there was a big bang of evolution. And the big bang of evolution was actually this molecule, photosystem 2. And photosystem 2 is a magic cube, and the magic cube contains of nothing but manganese, calcium, and some oxygen. And now every chemist in the world is trying to get the magic cube done in the lab. And it's very, very difficult to synthesize it right up and then to transfer it into actually a functional catalyst. And the results were very, how to say, shocking. You had the magic cube, and the magic cube didn't give you any oxygen. It just didn't work. And now, in our lab, we are translating the magic cube into cobalt. We are taking a cube of cobalt, and then the cobalt is more agreeable. We can get some ligands from nature and put the ligands around the cobalt molecule and then see the mechanisms and how it really works. And this is the beauty of catalysis. We can do it in the nanoparticle way, or we can do it also in the molecular way. And finally, you can ask yourselves, can we buy this? Is it a place? to put in our backyard, to use in our garden, or someplace else. And the artificial leaf was actually founded in a company by Professor Dan Nocera in Harvard. He made a prototype, but this prototype was not yet working well. So we need a bit of engineering to get the protons flowing, to get a junction, and to get all these interfaces right, and then, in fact, we can bring it to the market. And finally, in our consortium in Zurich, we are well linked with research groups all over the world. We have collaborations with the States, with Asia, with Australia. And what we do is something that's very clean, simple and straightforward. We take our catalysts, we let the visible light shine on these catalysts, and then we can actually see how much oxygen the catalysts produce. And we have a lot of visitors in our consortium. We call it light to chemical energy conversion. And then 
we can harvest the oxygen in the little test vials, and you yourself could come, join us, and really have a look how this works. This is a future technology that's very promising and clean, and everybody could basically go check it out and have a look by themselves. And this is how chemistry and science should actually be. We should be able to lay our hands on it, make it happen, and make it work for us. And the catalyst making is proceeding quite well. And before I end my work in this, I actually want to see these economic hydrogen fields. This would be a way to put these lazy bags in the nature, in the environment, wherever we want, and then finally to harvest the hydrogen from natural fields in the green or from some bag fields, where we can actually pump it off at a market-going price. And this is a vision that we can all develop together. It's fundamental research, and it's also applied research. And we can benefit from it, and it would be so wonderful if we had it at the end of our work here in Zurich. All right.